the martyrdom of St. Andrew. And it came to pass that Andrew had journeyed to the city of Acnes, and the city of Arganus, and the city of Sophris, the rebellious and wicked cities which were neighbours one to the other, and they were united in his lot wherein he was to preach the good news of the gospel. And these were the last of the cities to which he journeyed. And his departure from this world drew near. And when he entered these cities he preached to them with a loud voice, Thus, whoso forsaketh not father or mother, and sons, and daughters, and brothers, and sisters, and wife, and silver, and gold, and raiment, and treasures, and goods, and fields, and everything in this world, and followeth not after me, is not worthy of me. And he commanded them about it, that they should believe in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ with the right faith. And they begged him earnestly for more about it. Because, he had mentioned before that he who did not do it would have no right to the kingdom of heaven, and would not have everlasting life. And the people of this country were a very wicked folk, and they had little religious faith. And when they heard Andrew speak in this way, they were wroth against him with a great wrath. And, in, many places they heard of the wonders which he did in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, and every one who asked him was cured by him, and he bestowed the cure without price. And many of the people spread his name abroad in that region, and he brought them near unto God, who receiveth every one that cometh unto him with all his heart. Then it entered into the heart of the people of this city in which Andrew was preaching about the knowledge of God to assemble themselves and take counsel together about the disciple. And the magistrates said unto each other, Come, let us unite and agree concerning the killing of this deceiver, who hath corrupted our religion and hath come to us in the name of a new God, whose name we know not, neither we nor our fathers. One of them said, Let us go out to him and entreat him to go out of our country that no discord may happen, for many, men, of the city have believed by his speech, and if we do not make haste and do something by our own Y11, there will be some ruin to the inhabitants of the city. And they sent trusty folk to him of those who were of noble race. And they went to him joyfully. And this was by the will of God, that the envoys also who had gone to him might believe. And when they had entered into, where, the disciple, was, he began and said, The peace of the Lord be with you. They replied unto him, May thy peace be with us. And they spoke in words of peace. The disciple said unto them, Sit ye down, O ye good brethren, whom the good Lord hath called to the holy city. They replied unto him, saying, Forgive us, O servant of the good God, in whom we have found the knowledge of God. O thou just one! About whom we took counsel for the evil, which Satan had sown in our heart. O thou innocent man! Who art like a lamb playing and submissive to him who is seeking to kill it. Truly we, since we have seen thy person, every thought of evil is put far from us, and thou hast made our hearts new by the fear of God. Have we not commanded evil concerning thee, and brought it upon thee? We have come to entreat thee to go out of our city, and we have said in the ignorance of our minds that thou art he who didst trouble our city. But now we know certainly that thou art he who shall save us from the enemy, and shalt intercede for us with the Lord, that he may forgive our sins. And now, O Holy Father, we will not separate ourselves from thee, and we desire thee to make us thy disciples. And Andrew blessed them, and sent them to their houses in peace, and exhorted each of them to learn the faith of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And they went away from him praising God, and they went about in all the marketplaces of the city, and in its streets, reciting the praises of God. And they left the blessed day post la Andrew. And when the company of evil men who had sent them on that business heard these things, they were greatly perplexed, and they took counsel about it amongst themselves, and they said, Let us go together to the place where Andrew is, and let us burn him alive in the fire, so that he may not return to our city, and every one who hath believed in him may hear of us and be afraid of us. And they went out to the place where he was, and they surrounded him and said unto him, We will burn thee alive. And when the disciple saw th. If they were endeavouring to do evil, he looked at them, and spake to them in words of peace, and said unto them, O ye rebellious men! Do not fulfil the evil which ye have determined, which Satan its father hath taught you. And return unto God. And if ye will not receive, this, from me, I have entreated God about the fire in which ye have purposed to burn me, and he will send fire from heaven from himself to burn you and your city, that ye may know that there is no God who is mighty in heaven and earth, save Jesus the Christ my Lord. 
and they reviled the Lord Jesus the Christ, and the holy disciple. And when he heard their reviling he was wroth with a fierce wrath, and he lifted up his hand towards heaven and made supplication, saying, O my Lord and my God, Jesus the Christ! Hearken unto my supplication, and send fire from heaven to burn these wicked people who have reviled thy holy name. And before he had finished his supplication fire fell from heaven and burn up this wicked multitude. And the saint became known in all the town and its district because of the wonder which had come forth from his hands. And the rest of the wicked never ceased, but they plotted evil again. And they said, If this man remains in our city he will ruin us with his sorcery, and there is worse in store for us from his doing, for he will separate us from our middle dot wives. They sent treacherously to him with soft speech until he came into their midst, and they gathered themselves together against him and beat him with heavy blows. And they went round about the city with him, he being naked, and cast him into prison until they had taken counsel against him how they should kill him. And the custom of this city was, that whomsoever they wished to slay they hanged him on a piece of wood in the form of a cross, and threw stones at him. And when they had thrown Andrew into prison he arose and prayed earnestly, and entreated the Lord that he would send fire from heaven and burn these three cities as, he did, the first time, because of the beating and the acts of violence which they had done to him. Then the Lord appeared unto him in the prison and said unto him, Peace be unto thee, O Andrew. My beloved disciple, be not anxious, for thou hast finished thy course, and hast attained to thine apostleship. And this is the place in which thou shalt complete thy testimony, and shalt inherit the kingdom of heaven with the just ones who have pleased me. And when Andrew heard it he rejoiced and was glad, and he remained for the rest of the night praising God. And when it was the morrow he went forth out of the prison, and they hanged him upon the cross, and stoned him till there was an end of him. And believing folk took him and left his body in a grave. And this was the completion of his testimony on the fourth day of the month of Koyak, and praise be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, for ever and ever. Amen.